Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated, continuing on with my historically accurate monster playthrough in the Tip Volume 2 mod. A bit too historically accurate at the moment because we haven't managed to do anything in the first few years of Perluck's rule. We have a bit of a, a money crisis caused by... Well, I hired a knight. That's basically what caused it. I hired a knight. Uh, we also can't raid because, as people pointed out, we are feudal. I forgot about that. I was wondering, what's the reason that we can't raid? I know it's something. Uh, we're feudal. So I'm really beginning to dislike the 1066 start for Ireland. I've spent a lot of time dealing with references to cattle raids into the 12 and 1300s. So coming back to this and not being able to raid in the 1000s, it kind of confused me. It threw me off for a while. I think you've too much work to do to try and make 1066 historically accurate with the kind of the structure or the template or the scaffolding that Paradox has put in place. But uh, 867, there you go. That's what we're going to go back to at some stage, but not today. What we're going to do, we're going to wait for Thurlock to get his next uh, lifestyle perk. We've only a couple of months to go and we are out of debt and we are going to push on... Osiris. From there we're in a bit of trouble because I'm trying to get my opinion up with the Pope. Uh, possibly so that he will grant us a claim to a region, but it's not looking great at the moment. So we might be dealing with a strong and powerful Connacht for a while. Let's see what we can get done. So we've managed to both sway the Pope and get that lifestyle perk at pretty much the same time. So we have forced vassalization. We'll go for this one, uh, just in case we need the, uh, the the marriages for anything. And this is what I want to do now is switch across to wealth focus. And it might very well be avaricious. So it's not going to help us immediately, but it's going to help us kind of further down the line. And what I'm going to do then is we're going to take our steward. I will see what the uh, the actual change will be if we put him... Okay, so we've gone from 1.3 to 1.4. Not the best, not the worst. I'm just going down through the list of children in the court and appointing educators to them. And we have a couple of rather strange scenarios. We have two children belonging to House Krahur or House Concavor. So here is our daughter Moor. And her son, or her husband, I should say, uh, Rory and Cibui. So, Rory is the son of A, who is the current ruler of Connacht. He is going to be deposed by A of Brefni. A of Brefni is then going to be deposed later on by uh, Rory and Cibui. But because of the way it's kind of handled, I think these guys, he's in Connacht, but our daughter is in our court. So her sons and the future... Uh, rulers, I think Taig is going to be the ruler after Rory. Uh, they're in our court as well. So we can educate them. Uh, but that's one of the kind of the strange things. Mandet has done a, a good chunk of, of finding like the historical people and uh, putting them in, in the, the historical alliances. Uh, so the court is uh, very much fleshed out. And it's the same for all the rest of the regions as well. Uh, what I have done is our son, Krahur, or Konkavor, I've given him a learning education, and I have put him under the tutelage of our bishop, so we could try and install. Well, we'll probably be dead at that stage, but maybe one of our sons will try to install their brother, their half-brother, Krahur, as a bishop at some time in the future. And Ragenveld, the one of our counsellors, um, the ruler of Ormond has died. His son Olaf has come to power, so we need to find a new counselor, a new spy master. Uh, generally, in the base game, he causes a lot of problems. He hangs around for a, a long time and uses a lot of problems. Here is our son and heir, uh, Markarthuk. We will appoint him as our spy master. We don't have anybody. No, we don't have any other strong. Uh, strong claimants. And our son Taig has decided or is threatening to leave the court. 
I don't be like that. Well, he'll have something to do back in court fairly soon. It wasn't the most impressive of lives. Thorlock of Munster rests in the arms of the Lord at 65 years of age, about 10 years early. Uh, he died of old age. An inveterate diplomat. There was no argument he could not peacefully resolve. That's the first time I've seen that one. Petty King Markarthuk ascends to the throne. Seeing the agents of Satan around every corner, heretics and heathens alike should beware his rule. Uh, historically, what's going to happen is that Markarthuk is going to exile his brother. Uh, he's then going to become ill. They're going to basically fix their differences. His brother will return and then exile him and seize control of uh, Munster. But um, after his death, the crown will briefly go back to Dunica's family. So Donica, who re ruled previous to Thorlock, his grandson, Brian, so Morica's son, Brian, will uh, will rule, and then it will return to, uh, to Dermot's family. That's what's going to happen historically. Let's see if we can actually keep this guy alive long enough and maybe even install our younger brother as ruler after us. We will continue as Petty King Mark Carthuk. Well, there you go. We didn't. We didn't get a great. We didn't get a great run as poor old um, poor old Thorlock. Let's see. We've a we've a chunk of stuff to do. We have a chunk of stuff to do. Oh, we have a chunk of stuff to do. I think we've kept much the same situation as our father had. So Murduk of Desvoon is left in place as Chancellor. Uh, Dermot of Loch Lane is. Uh, remains on as steward. Uh, Brian, Morica's son, will continue on as marshal. And the only addition is Taig has now taken our place as our uh, spy master. And for nominating a successor, uh, we have no children to nominate. It would be more sensible to nominate Taig, but we will nominate uh, Dermot. We'll see if we can get the historical, the historical ruler to uh, to succeed. And it does look like our vassals are actually supporting uh, Dermot as well. So in the event that we don't have any children or in the event that we die of old age, we might even try and abdicate in Dermot's favor at some stage to uh, to get the um, the historical rule going. But there you go, there you go. Thorlock, the poor man, for all the excitement, for all the videos I've made about him, for all the arguments that I've made. I want Thorlock in the game. Lads, he didn't, he didn't see out much. We have a lifestyle to pick. He's gone down the schemer route. So he's digging for dirt. Uh, more of their schemes. We'll put him on Intrigue and Natural Dread. And we might try and finish off the, uh, the schemer tree. And finally, we have the money. We are finally in a position to attack Ossery. Our father's death is unfortunate, but it does open up the way because, of course, he got that claim on Ossery, which means that that claim is now gone. So, we could request a claim from the Pope. Do you know what? He's not too far from actually accepting... So what we will try to do is we will try to sway him. That's probably not going to uh, to get him to a stage where uh, anytime soon where he will grant us um, grant us power or title. So what we're going to do is, unfortunately, if I remember how to do it, we're going to have to send this lad back to Ossery. Back to Ossery with you. And one of the last things I'll do then before we continue on. Uh, generally, I, I rarely do this, but we will increase the crown authority because it will bring in a bit more money. And I think really at um, at feudal level, you do need to push up the crown authority. So we'll, we'll pass that. I don't think it's going to impact our money all that much. 
And I'd better just make sure that everybody is increasing development in... Just make sure he's in the right place. Uh, you are on domestic affairs, uh, training commanders, and we don't really have anything for you to do just yet. Let's see if we can make more of an impact than Tharluk did. So Moor, the daughter of Petty King Ekmarkach, has given birth to a son since the little one is part of the Dalgash dynasty. He should be blessed with a good name. Sure, we'll name him after the dare. So this is Taig. Uh, we'll, we'll name him after the dare. And... Uh, we've also taken a, um, a secondary wife. Just to get that, get rid of that penalty. The Pope wants us, the Pope wants us to have women. And uh, Dermot, I think, has possibly come of age. And we need to find a wife for Dermot. Lothian and House Dunbar have always been good for alliances. They were important contributors in the, the last uh, playthrough, the Ulla playthrough. So we're going to go back there again. Here is the, I think it's the eldest daughter of Duke Gus Patrick of Lothian. She has a couple of traits that are considered virtuous. Uh, to both Catholics and to Insularis. So we're going to organize that marriage. This is Malcolm's uh, steward. I'm not too sure is this the Goss Patrick that actually appeared in our last playthrough. But uh, good chunk of troops, so we will send that proposal. And it might, of course, get us involved in the affairs up in that region. So that alliance is accepted just as one of our vassals creates an independence faction against us. The Devils. So this is pretty much par for the road as a, or par for the course, as an Irish ruler is constant, constant, what would be described in this game as liberty factions. Uh, maintaining power and maintaining influence, especially on the death of a ruler. So these guys basically had submitted to our father. They haven't submitted to us. Now it's not a given that they would immediately break off and declare independence, but uh, the death of a ruler, the personal ties that uh, bound all of the those who had given submission together, uh, those ties are gone. And so quite often on the death of a ruler, you would see the next ruler either needing to go on a hosting, go on a raid to enforce their rule, or uh, being attacked. But we don't have we don't have the raiding mechanic in feudal Ireland, so they'll just stay there and shut up. See, told you, they shut up. Our bishop, the poor man, is back to us. He has prowled through the exact same documents that he had the last time, and he is finally. He found the files that he had in his PC, basically from the last time. Uh, he didn't, he, he, it was so long he couldn't remember what he'd named them. Some of them, he just left them in the download folder. He didn't even move them to like proper named files or anything like that. Maybe he had to go back over some old hard drives, but he's found all the stuff that he used the last time to fabricate a claim to Ossery, and we will see that it is done again. Our... Stuart has given us a mismanaged population just after ending that um, that uh, faction. Thanks for that. And what we'll have to do is... At least he doesn't have any allies, which is handy. Uh, we do, but we have lost our alliance to... We could, we could reform it, I'm sure. Uh, we could reform it, but um, we will for now. Because they're getting a bit dangerous. We will, we will leave them there. And with the troops that we have, I don't think we have any alliances on the island itself. We don't. I'd be hoping that our commanders are going to be in a, a much better position than the commanders of Osri. And what we're going to do, with very little preparations, is we are going to declare war to enforce our claims on the Earldom of Osri and bring it back into the control of Munster. Of course, Osri would have kind of split off in the 860s. It was split out from Munster. Uh, stays independent for a while and is then uh, basically becomes part of Leinster. But we are going to undo that and restore our authority over the region. 
Oh no, it's a Kraken. Or maybe it's a Megalodon. No, it's a Leviathan. It behooves a petty king to spend time at sea with the salty air in his face and a fine vessel beneath his feet. Today sees my personal craft and a small escorting squadron out for drills, practice, and plaisir. The short voyage has been exhilarating. Um, then we spotted a distant plume of water followed by a small island of wine-dark flesh rolling out of the waves. The greatest beast of all the deeps. A whale. 29% chance to get money. 100% chance to get money. Or the whale goes free. Money. If that whale has money, I want it. It's looking like a pretty even battle, but I'd be hoping that our commanders might have a bit of an advantage. And we have stuck Uhmaron in the battle. Uh, he was the commander selected by uh, Murica just before Murica's death. We have already taken Earl Donal's son and heir Dunica hostage after capturing him at the Battle of Kilkanig and we are going to march in to... never mind. Uh, the Pope has passed away and we're now in a position where I don't believe we can actually... well we can but it's taken a while. It's taken a while. So one of our alliances, one of the alliances I was actually kind of half depending on, has fallen as a result of the death of, I believe that's our father-in-law. And he has died. Uh, slain in battle by forces loyal to A. So let's see what the hell is going on over there. No idea. So I'm, I'm wondering if that was A of Connacht. So here's Earl A. Here is Petty King A. Eh? Something's going on up there somewhere, and they have taken the lands of the Dalfiathuk. They have pushed even further from coast to coast, from sea to shining sea. Oh, this devil. So it's going to be a lengthy siege of this area, because we don't have uh, great numbers. They are coming down again, and if they were to fight us, then they might actually lose enough. Oh, fantastic. Look at this. Look at what's after hitting Limerick. You absolute devils. You devils. We had that battle at Kilkanig. There's our battle pope, or our battle bishop, uh, Patrick, in with uh, 28 kills. Uh, would have been common for bishops, maybe not common at this point in time into the um, into the 1060s for bishops to be commanding armies, but we do have instances of bishops in the 800s and before that commanding armies. We dealt a, a good chunk of a blow there. Uh, this guy was slain in battle by forces loyal to Mwel Shock Nail Mach Kruhur Uvrian. So it's one of the way that Mandate handles the, um... It's one of the way that he handles it. It You don't... A specific person doesn't kill somebody. Well, obviously, Moel Shocknail killed uh, this person. But it goes down as forces loyal to Moel Shocknail. So instead of actually Moel Shocknail, it was probably his retinue. But it can be sometimes kind of construed as Moel Shocknail was leading the army or was the uh, the king of the army. Um, I know that's that's handled because I think his argument is that you wouldn't know the ability to specifically say X killed Y as opposed to this guy was just slain when this retinue descended upon them. That's the, the argument that's uh, that he's, he's trying to make. The kill does still show up for him though, for, uh, from where Shock Nail, so his, his retinue uh, got a kill. The second battle, actually, I don't know when. When um, it's the same, the same people showing up in all the battles, and then they're in a pretty bad state by the end of it. Right. That only took a decade, and now look at this! Look at this! Look at this! The absolute devils! They've hit Limerick itself. There's nothing we can do to stop them. I'm going to... I don't know, do I want to stand down the army? Uh, we leave them standing for uh, a while. 
Before moving on any further, we will deal with our new prisoner, Gilliforic Mock Gilliforic, so good they named him twice. And we have a couple of different options. We could execute, ransom, negotiate, release. Of course, here are some of the new options. I'm going to click on it. Uh, gain 12 Dread. Effects on Gilliforic, Mock Morkyarthok Mock Gilliforic. Uh, gains the trait blind, leaves prison, loses 50 opinion, and all family members and spouses lose 20 opinion. What we're going to do is we are going to recruit him. We will negotiate his release. I suppose we just might as well stand down that army. And I don't think we're in a position... There's our half-sister and our courtier. Uh, what would what would generally happen in a scenario like this is that you would marry a female member of the family to him. So this guy, this guy wasn't the previous ruler. Again, the actual conquest of territory in medieval Ireland is basically unheard of. Uh, it's, it's all about gaining submission, getting hostages, and enforcing your rule onto people. Uh, getting him to, to recognize your authority, but that doesn't really work with the CK3 system. So I'm going to um, to restore him. I'm going to restore him to power. But we don't really have anybody that we can marry to him. Uh, we will grant him a title. We will grant him Osri. Can we grant him Osri? We can indeed. And he is now our vassal. We as might as well just... We can't, actually, while there's a hostile army around us. They are marching towards us now, which is fantastic. Uh, to the perceptive Petty King Markyarthak of Munster, I call on you to honour our alliance and join me in Lothian's Ducal Conquest. We'll accept that, but we're in a bit of a scenario. Courtier has been killed. Uh, our half-brother has been captured, and a courtier has been killed. The absolute devils. Where are they marching for now? They're still bullying us. Our wife is with child, potentially an heir to the kingdom. But we are suspicious. We could look into this uh, discreetly. We have a 90% chance of success. Are they heading for Claire? They are indeed. Uh, it seems my fears have been unfounded. Now, unfortunately, she has found out the suspicions. I should have trusted her. I should have trusted her all along. They're going for Mayo, and we're seeing um, more hostile troops actually over in that direction. Uh, Dublin, of course, is raiding into Kildare. Connacht raised its army and then dropped them again immediately afterwards. Uh, how is this? Uh, how is this scenario up here going? Our forces would be a help if we could get them up there. We're taking the scenic route. We're going the long way. Because I don't really have the, the ability to... Um, I don't want to lose the seven, the seven pound by going across by sea. So Dublin has expanded into Kildare. That gives them a right, I think, to Ossery. We'll see if we can raid this region. It'd be fantastic if we could. But no doubt these guys will finish their raid and come for us. We have twins. Can you imagine that? Twins. Oh, that'd be chaotic. Just imagine that. Having twins, that would be absolutely... That would be chaotic. Pray same breed, etc, etc. Edoin, good name. Lurthon, or Lurthon. Let's see what else we have. Skahach. Lasseriana. I know we've gone with that one. Uh, Kjacht, I think. Lawn, sure. Strong, wise, etc. Now... That would be interesting if those two forces hit after all the attention and the time and effort we put into uh, to naming our daughter. She has grown ill 
and she is now levitating in the hands of Saint uh, Ruon. So she has grown sickly. We have gotten ourselves a trait. We've tried, we've tried to make money off of this in the past. We've tried to make money off of this in the past, and it hasn't gone well. Let's let's see how it plays out this time. If what's going to happen here? Okay, I'm just saying if they shield us, if um, if Lothian shields us from that uh, that Norse army, a Tuavuan's lament. We need those resources for the troops. If one small village in Tovuun is to starve, the heated argument between my councillors follows me out of the room. Uh, Mwerduk, the representative from Tovuun, greets me with tired eyes as I approach. So here is the decree that will force them to leave you alone. We gain 50 intrigue lifestyle experience. We get 150 prestige, and we get increased levies for 10 years. I think we will go with that lifestyle experience and we get development growth which we do need so fantastic these guys are indeed shielding us Lothian is shielding us from uh, from this army so we can continue the siege maybe get some money maybe get some hostages we're going to have to try and ransom out our um, half brother at some stage I think that was Krahur who our father wanted to become a bishop well never mind about twins I had so many hopes for you, my Swedish child. You were going to be married off to somebody to uh, to cement alliances. So Lorne has died at just a couple of months old. So many possibilities died from being sickly in uh, December of 1077, just a, a couple of months old. And we gained 60 stress, which is a, a good chunk. Okay. So we captured, we captured somebody. I don't think we actually got any money. But we have seized Iona. We have managed to, uh, to siege down and seize Iona. They're probably going to take this and bring the war to, the, to an end. We could try to get our troops up to siege there, but I don't think it's going to pay off. Oh, Moron, who is leading the forces, is of course a, a brilliant siege individual we saw a tiny well I won't say a tiny but a 700 army passing by it was 1200 when it was um, when it was making a mess out of us uh, somebody is planning to kill well Shocknell after his excellent contribution in the last war and we actually don't have the forces to uh, to make a, a solid effort at the the region we're at 100 war score i imagine that's going to pretty much bring it to an end in a, a couple of minutes and we've gotten 50 gold in taxation we got some prestige so be it So these devils still get to raid, but we don't. Uh, way up there in the northern tip of Scotland, they have taken our half-brother hostage. We're going to have to pay out. We got 50 gold in taxes, and we're going to have to pay out 25 to secure the release of our brother Krahur. We do have a prisoner. I'm probably just going to release him. He's He could make a good diplomat, but... Um, I'd say yeah. I'd say we'll just we'll just release him. Uh, we will leave. Oh, we gained a week hooking him. Okay, I was gonna say we might lose some uh, some dread, but off he goes. Happy out. We have renegotiated our alliance with our brother-in-law, which we couldn't do there while we were at war. And our. A half brother is released with the finances back under control. Uh, what we will have to start trying to do is increase the levy sizes. Increase the levy sizes. Uh, what are the things that we could create? I don't think we need to worry too much about uh, mangonels and onagers just yet. We will probably just increase the light footman by one. So it's going to be an additional 0.15 per month. We might very well have to. Uh, 
uh, renegotiate that alliance with Connacht, because Connacht is becoming a, uh, quite frankly, terrifying power. Uh, try and split the uh, the north and south of the island between us. Another option that we have is to try and strike for me. I don't think we're going to be able to request a claim. And it's going to be difficult to actually uh, to, to make a claim in that region. So this will, this will at the very least protect us for a while. We are now suspicious of our... Uh, secondary wife. She's acting strange. We will look into it discreetly. We have a better chance of success. Because of our high intrigue values. And of course, even though we had a 93% chance of success, she is still found out about our suspicions. What fools we were! The forest of my dreams. Through my efforts to become a truly feared and respected figure, a vast number of guilty and disloyal persons have ended up in my dungeon. Have they? Many lowly cutthroats and pickpockets from the countryside and the cities await their fate. Apart from society, but I perhaps have a better idea for them. In my macabre machinations, I envisage a forest of impaled lowlives and traitors surrounding Limnoch. On all sides, a grim reminder to everyone of what happens when the petty king is betrayed. I see row after row of common criminals spreading out into the horizon, the wetlands stained in their blood. With a little work, we may round up enough of these vermin to make my dream a reality. Sure. The Forest of Corpses. At last my vision has been brought to life by the corpses of countless criminals. I stroll with leisure to the ambient sound of squawking birds and the gentle drip of stale blood onto sodden ground. I pass by row upon row of nameless lowlives and bandits, assured that any would-be highwaymen or bandits approaching Limnuk can see clearly what happens to those who attempt to sow crime and disorder in Petty Kingdom of Munster. Upon concluding my tour, I take in one last breath of the deathly miasma before returning home, content with my work. Don't, don't breathe that in. It will cause you and all the dwarves around you to have a mental break. And then they will stop making bone ornaments. And then we can't sell anything to the elves. So don't do that. Uh, now all will fear the name Petty King Markarthok of Munster. So he becomes known as the Impaler. And we gain Forest of Corpses. It's green, so it looks good. Uh, holding taxes go up by 10. Fantastic. Uh, control growth goes up. Popular opinion, who cares? Murkarthuk the Impaler. Boys, oh boys. Our steward has discovered that Earl Gilliforic owes us more money. I'm going to let it slide. His opinion isn't great, and he could very well push for a Liberty Faction, so we're going to gain a weak hook, and we might be able to use that at a later point in time to get something more out of him. Uh, we're also in a position where we're not really able to, uh, to face off against external threats at the moment. We have very strong uh, powers around us. So we have here, Morkada. So I'm wondering, is this... Um... So this is, this is basically the name that the dynasty will have in a couple of generations' time. So Dermot Machmurcha, of course, who will go to England uh, to seek the help of... Is it Henry II? It is. To retake uh, Leinster when he is driven out of there by Rory Okrahur. Leading to the Norman invasions indirectly, so that's the uh, so the the family name kind of changes in the uh, around this time period or in the next the next couple of uh, decades. 
With a tired yet blissful smile, Anya presents me with a perfect little daughter. Uh, lawn 2, Electric Boogaloo. Dervla, Dervla. Well, if we were hoping for a big heap of gold anytime soon, we're going to be disappointed. Here is the Pope. Uh, the new Pope, who succeeded Alexander there recently. And he doesn't... I think he actually dislikes us. They don't dislike us as much as they disliked our father. He was a sinner. We've never sinned. That forest of dead criminals, they deserve what they got. That's not a sin. So... We could probably try and sway him. I'm trying to sway, sway our um, our bishop at the moment to get him to stop being a devil. And we're making um, one gold a month, so we could actually hold off and we could hold off and see if we could uh, if we could get that together. Let's see if there's another way we could make some gold. Well, the short answer is no. I think anybody that we try to kidnap, we have about a 5% chance of actually managing to kidnap them. So no is the short answer. We're going to have to try and push up a bit further on this schemer tree to um, to actually get to a stage where we might be we might have more success. And what I have started doing is trying to restore control in various areas. Uh, why isn't it? Oh, it's this one I should be pressing. So some areas that were raided by the uh, by those Norse devils, and there we go. We have unlocked another lifestyle park for the intrigue lifestyle. Now we're going to go for hostile scheme success chance. It's not going to make much of a difference. Uh, we have Disrupt Scheme Effectiveness, then we have Hostile Scheme Success Chances goes down, and then we have, we can have two Hostile Schemes, and then we can go for the Schemer Trait. Uh, do we have, so we have Fabricate Hooks, what we could of course do is go back to the, go back to the, uh, the Fantastic. A way that we generated money in the last playthrough, one of the best ways of, of generating money, is go back to Golden Obligations. Uh, which would allow us to demand payment for hooks. So we might try, we might try to finish off, I'm wondering. You see, if we go for this one, we're going to be stuck here for a while. Uh, we have pretty much all the best that we can get out of... Do you know, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. We have the best that we can get out of the Schemer Tree for now. So we will indeed, we will switch to Wealth Focus for a brief period of time. We'll get Golden Obligations. We'll have to hang around here for a bit longer. Uh, we could go for maybe War Profiteer and Here Gold. Or Here Geld. And get the Vassal Tax Contribution. So even if we just got those three. Or we could even chop and change between uh, some of them but once we get golden obligations that will allow us to fabricate hooks and demand payments for them and it looks like we're going to be going down that route again so there we go unfortunately the walls have begun to close in around Markarthok the impaler Connacht has taken a good chunk of land I don't think they've taken so much that the region will actually split apart on A's death. Uh, Leinster has also managed to solidify its holdings in the region. We have an alliance with Connacht and we have enough of an alliance in Scotland and Wales that will protect us from Leinster. If uh, Connacht pushes up into Ulster any further then we might see Connacht split up on A's death but at the moment uh, we're pretty much just trying to find New sources of revenue. I don't think we're going to undergo much of a military expansion for a while. Uh, we're about 11 gold away from being able to buy Bowman. But that's going to then take a, a really long time to actually get that money back. We're not in a position to, uh, to get money from the Pope for a while. So we're just hanging out. Trying to practice kidnapping people. Trying to get better at um, at kidnapping people. Not going great at the moment. Unfortunately. Poor Markarthok. 
He just wants he just wants to kidnap people. He just wants to kidnap people. We didn't get much of a run out of poor Thorlock. Uh, but we are now in the uh, a more historically accurate playthrough. We're still in a historically accurate playthrough. We have managed to secure power for our son Markarthok, who historically succeeded Thorlock. And we will see. We do have uh, a son of our own, but we might actually be able to uh, to secure the ascension of our uh, brother Diarmid and keep the history train on the tracks. Thank you very much for joining me on this one. Thanks for all the comments on the last one and for pointing out uh, why I couldn't raid and things like that. And hopefully I will see you on the next one.